We here at Hack the Dino like to play video games, and assuming you do too, otherwise you wouldn't be here, and that would be silly, unless you got a, f you know, bit of a crush on this guy. Look at him, he's nice Pokemon hair. Do you like Heck the Pidgeotos? He likes balls being thrown at his face. Oof. What? Yep, anyway. Pokemon uh, joke. You can... <laughs> If you like balls being thrown at your face, be sure to head over to youtube.com backslash hack the dino and subscribe to us there and like our videos. Or head on over to twitch.tv backslash hack the dino and subscribe to us there. Check us out on Facebook at hack the dino. Or if you just want a podcast, be sure to download our words from the hack the dino title uh, using your podcast apps like Spotify and, and iTunes and the other ones that are all here for fun times. Anyway, Dan, what have you been playing recently? So I. Um... I'm reviewing today <laughs> um, Streets of Rogue, and I've been playing this on Xbox Game Pass. So you look at this game straight away and you think Streets of Rogue, what, a, a play on Streets of Rage, it's going to be a sideways scrolling beat em up. It is not that. I it thought is... it was a spin off to Moulin Rouge. I made <laughs> well, that joke last week. That's kind of what it is, yeah. Um, this game is like kind of nothing I've ever played before. It is an open. It's it's a ro it's a what, what about it? it's a roguelike insta death game that I've labelled it as. So you you choose um first up you start in a tutorial and the tutorial is hilarious. You're in a just standing there and there's another dude there and he's like, Yo dude, this game's hard. Try walking forward and you walk and he goes, Oh my god <laughs> And you're just doing this menial task and he's getting so excited about it. you're a genius and in the end his head explodes. So it's <laughs> like he like you just you just like press the A button and that's, stuff like that. And it's very nineties. Yeah, yeah. And um and it set and it sets the tone of the game from then on. Um you basically all you do is crime. You do crime, um, it's randomly generated levels. You have like a couple of missions that you can do. You can bring it up and, it, and, it, and it's easy missions. There's stuff like go to this guy and neutralize him. Neutralize is the word for killing in it. Um, and then, uh, or go to this place and blow up this thing and stuff like that. You have to go up and then once you've done all the missions in the game, you can go up to the next level via an elevator. Um, except you get, what makes this game really unique is you can choose like, so many characters from the start and all of them come with a pre you get these things called traits so you might have a guy that um he is a doctor so if he he can you know heal himself or and or other doctors are friendly to him uh, you know there's all these weird traits and as you go through you get as you up up uh, level up your character you get to choose another trait each time you level up and you can get some really ridiculous ones and then you when you die um, the currency in this game is chicken nuggets, nice. which is amazing. Nice. So you spend your chicken nuggets on traits that you could possibly have for when you level up, and that and that's how you, you get better in the game. Um, the sheer amount of randomness and hilarity, because the other characters react to. Did he stuff. just go into a box like snake? Trick. No, that so the character there, he is, that's the um. That's I saw that. the, the shape guy. Look how excited these two freaking nerds got. <laughs> um, I love it. So you can be characters like a vampire. You can be characters like a ghost. You can be characters like an investment banker. You can be a, a, a bum. You can be like, you know, da, 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 so da, da, many. You can be goons. There are two gangs in there. Um, there's the blue gang and the red gang. And they all react to each other in different ways depending on who they are and who you are. You can be a shapeshifter where you can go into the bums of people and control them. That's what this character is here. Um, everyone is kind of chilled out unless you go into uh, areas. And then there's the items. You have so many items in this game, and they're all hilarious. Are they and, called funny things? Well, there's just strange things. Like there's lots of you can inject yourself with stuff, and like, or you can if you don't want to inject it, you can um you can put it in the ventilation system and like make it affect everyone in the building. You can basically just work out any way you want to do these levels, and and do it, and you. And you progress in the game that you so you have to finish four levels in a row, right, to go to the next like world. But you have to finish each world with a character, a different character fight, like so five different characters to unlock that world. So the next time you come in, you can start from that point. And you just every character you just have to play so differently, and you can create so much chaos. And then one level you'll just get to, and it'll be like there are missiles falling from the sky. Or in this level, there is one. There is a Terminator robot just going around. It's unkillable. That will just always hunt you down, and it's random as well. Like it, and there was one that if you're not indoors every t twenty seconds, like you lose, like there's this green flash, and you lose health. And you see all the characters, you know, it's soccer player, and like 
It's just this crazy good game. You can also, um, and they do comedy in it, and it's funny, and it's really, really, really hard to do comedy in games, I think, that works. It kind of reminds oh. me of, uh, like, the old Sierra games, the Space Coast Network, where they took pop culture things and referenced them and made them parts of comedy in the games without actually yeah, like, using like, the stuff. Yeah, and, and oh, like you were saying earlier, it's a very vibes of cannon fodder. Kind of yeah. And what makes it awesome as well, it has four player multiplayer. So you can play with all your mates causing this chaos. You know, you can go to you can go to shops and you know go to the vendor or you can like um you can kill the vendor. You, you know, you can do anything. You can do whatever you want. You look in bins, you find stuff. Like it's just wow. I know look in bins. Um you can put mutators on so you know you can like just have everyone has rocket launchers in the entire level. Like, I saw an item called the potential to not suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I'd like it, that it, one. It, and it's just like there are so many traits, there are so many mutations, and there are so many items that I haven't unlocked. And it just, it's just one of those. And you, you, at first, when you're playing, you're like, this is okay, but you just, you find yourself like, there's like, I really want to go back and keep playing it. You know, one of those little, like, it gets like, it gets in those your little mind. gnawing things where you're at work going, oh, I just want to be playing that game. Yeah, 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 and like, and when you're when you're on it and everything's it's working out time. wicked, it feels so good. You're on a great run and like. And you feel invincible, and then suddenly everything just goes to crap. Like suddenly, um, you, you might have the best item in the world, and then a thief will just walk past you and randomly just take it. Like so, you have to watch out what guys are around as well. So if you see there's a thief, or there's a ninja, there's slaves in it, and it's like like there's people who are slave drivers and actual slaves that you can buy. You can also buy NPCs to come and help you. It's all crimes are in here to do. <laughs> Every crime, all if the you... crimes are there, and there are people doing the crimes. And like, if you're and if you're like the the shapeshifter and you're a tiny little man, police hate you. So police will always chase you. So it's like if sixteen you... bit GTA Five. Yeah, <laughs> kind like of the original GTA. But like to unlock characters, it tells you how to unlock it. Like to unlock the vampire, you have to destroy twenty gravestones. But then the ghosts get angry at you, and then you have to get the ghost gun. Hate to kill it when ghosts get angry at me. But you know what I mean? Like everything me. is. Has a everything you do has like a kind of not a consequence of the thing happens and you learn and you go oh I could next time I could do that instead of do this or what everybody's doing on the thing he just he's got a whole bunch of guys to go in and beat someone up for him like great little game it's on Games Pass at the moment it's a freebie it's on Switch cool <laughs> well like um, and I just I just think it's a a great little game like you should like pick it up especially if you've got a Game Pass man it's a no brainer it's a beer and chicken wings one as well like, beer and chicken over. wings. But, like, you know, fun, 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 like fun. That. Beer and chicken wings. That's it. That's Dan. Dan out. You know what else is fun? Nintendo 64. So, I've been playing Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is also on Games Pass. I hated this. You can see on the screen now, see the xylophone? They put Microsoft on there. Why that, would they do that? Because Microsoft own Rare now and all of Rare's properties. So when they bought Rare, they bought Banjo-Kazooie, released yeah. it as part of the Rare replay, and they go, no, no, they'd always had Microsoft on his xylophone. It's not just erroneously... Yeah, erroneous. Rare like, always put on it and hoped that Microsoft would buy them. That's right. It's kind of silly as well, because Microsoft don't make pianos. <laughs> xylophones, yeah. Xylophones, I mean. Yeah. weird. Um, now, Glockenspiels, yeah. however. So I saw this on Games Pass, and I thought, you know what, I used to love this game as a kid. I'm going to give it another go. Um, this game is still really fun to play. Uh, I mean, sure, it looks like a Nintendo 64 game. Uh, I didn't realize how small the open worlds are because they were big when I was playing them back when I was That's a younger man. You were little. I was. I was. No, actually, I've been this height since I was 13. So, um, back in your Pokeball. Uh, I uh, still think that the, the yeah. <laughs> So those who don't know what we're doing and ever played this, these are the voices in the game. Uh, it's it's fun. It, I never realised what a um, Mario sixty four clone it was, but the mechanics are completely different. Um, the way that they've used Banjo and, and Kazooie to get to different area and get different items. Uh, fantastic game, just a fun filled game. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I don't know really what else I can say about it, but I, I've had a fun time with this. Um, I've also before the show started managed to play. Um, Ghost of Tsushima for 20 minutes, so I only just picked it up today. Uh, overall, for, of the 20 minutes I've played, I will love it. You, I, you I installed it. <laughs> I installed it. it. It looks fantastic. Um, the only problem I have, I didn't put it in Kurosawa mode because uh, the black and white, because as we were discussing last time, that uh, you need colors to be able to complete puzzles. Oh, which... Is that what the mode's called? Kurosawa mode? Yeah. 
Oh. Um, huh. I did, so I, I put you it, understand that before. I didn't know what you're talking about. I put it in Japanese uh, cinema mode, which is uh, color, but with uh, Japanese voice actors. Unfortunately, they didn't do the lip syncing to match the Japanese uh, voice acting. So it looks like a really bad dub. But that just looks like all dubs, not bad dubs. Like if you watch a dubbed film, it is they don't match but the lips. generally when they're dubbed, you have English over Japanese well, mouth movements. Going back to Banjo. Yep. So swap it back around, Brain. So the graphics have always been updated, haven't they? Yes. Like from yes, the in this one, yes. Is it is it like a, con- a Conker's kind of clone? Uh, Conker's came after this. So that even Conker's ripped on it? Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, they're all Mario 64 clones. Um, Spyro, Crash, they're all of the same ilk. Uh, all wanting to cash in on Mario, which was the very first uh, sort of semi-open world. Not open world, open area. Yeah, area. Yeah. Um, type third person game uh and this is probably one of the best out of all of them even conquers was a bit rough but this is this is just fun it, it's small and they try and make it seem big because when you were playing it, it it was a lot bigger than anything you'd ever played before um it is a collectathon only if you want it to be like you you only get certain amounts in it's order to good. go to the next level um and as dylan steve was saying in the chat conquers is just an adult version it's that's pretty pretty it good. conquers bad fur day yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's one, one of the, the last the poo. One of the last Nintendo 64 games so to release. And that cart alone at the moment costs about $180. It's too much. for In a box, nah. it's $400. Yeah, get oh, why I mean, not? Keep it. Or you could buy a Lego Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I've been playing. I'll, uh, next time we meet, I'll talk about Ghost of Tsushima a little bit more, I think. But Floppy, what have you been cracking? What are uh, you going to review? I am reviewing Iron Man VR. Oh, mate, Now, due to life and things, I haven't played heaps of this yet. Um, but I cracked it out the other night, and I, I like my VR. I'm pretty good with VR. I don't generally get so motion sickness. you're VR good at it? I'm VR good, yeah. Very. Very I'm very good at it. Um, That's what VR playing. First thing first thing I'll say is the controls for this, really intuitive. Like, it was really easy to figure out what I was doing and to, I wouldn't say master the controls, but get good at them quick. Right. So it is really, you have two motion controllers. So the uh, the PlayStation 3 slash 4 motion controllers, they are Tony's or your hands. You have a button that uses the repulsors to be able to fly and a different button that shoots. So you have to fly with your hands behind, down, back, yeah. through your back? Now, the like... first thing I'll say, though, is the flight controls are really good. Good, so good, I had to sit down to do this, which works out fine. I sat in a stool. Wait, wait, wait why does that make it good? Because they, they Cause felt, feel like I felt like I was flying. Oh, do you feel like a bit woozy? I, oh, not woozy. I just felt like if I stand stood up for too long, I was probably going to lose balance. Dude, I get um, a sick insurgency simulator. Like, yeah. You don't even move. In so I did it sitting on like a stool and still had full movement of my arms and you'd put your hands down and you'd face your palms backwards, hit the buttons and you would fly forward. And then just little movements of your wrists, you would change where you were flying in the air and you'd go up and sideways and down. And what you can do though, because it is full 360 view, um, you can spin around to see everything. But you and getting, get tangled up in the cords get and choke up. yourself. So and what die. they've done is that next to the thumb buttons on your motion controllers is the little X and O buttons. They can just spin you 90 degrees to the right or to the left in the game. I always, and that I becomes that, really easy to use, though. I always find that stuff takes me out of it, like in the Doom VR. Like, yeah, so that, that was stuff. teleportation, though. This one is just a turn. See, is this on rails? No. Like, can you choose no, where to go? You can choose. Ex- so in this part here, when I was playing it, I landed on top of the plane, stood there, and shot all the drones that were coming around. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so, yeah, it's not on rails at all. There are areas that it doesn't want you to go, and if you go too far, it'll sort of turn you back, so you're outside of the zone or something like that. that. If you just decided to go 18 kilometers the wrong way. Oh, hang on. I want to see how he fixes the wing. Does he just shoot at it? Oh, no, you grab it and bend the crap out of that thing. Oh, that's cool. And so in these areas where you have to be in a certain part, it'll hold you that part. You don't have to worry about the flying part, and then you oh, just do cool. the part that you needed to do. Now, one thing I did want to ask yeah. from the reviews, I, I've not played it. I've just heard other people talk about it and mm-hmm. read reviews. How are the loading times? Uh, well, I've only played like I haven't played heaps of it yet, so I haven't really encountered a loading time that was. Well, the horrible. two the two arguments I've heard is one person said, "Yeah, the loading times are ridiculous. They're long. They're boring." And the uh, well, loading times are fun usually. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, they they take too long. Oh, okay. Uh, but the rebuttal I heard from that is like, "Yeah, you're in VR, so usually when you have a game that's uh, loading up, you know, you, you grab your phone, you look at Twitter, or you look at your Facebook, and yeah. then you know it it goes a lot quicker because you're distracting yourself. But 
you're in VR, you've got nothing else to do but yeah, sort of sit there I generally and wait. sort of just look around and play with my hands and stuff like that. Like, I just say, like Vegas, it, it might be, I don't know, maybe it's 20 seconds. Um, and what about the world? Like, we, we look like he's flying through an abandoned city here. Like yeah, so I haven't been Nintendo to the city part game. yet. I've started, I started it. And so the, I start, the story starts with Tony deciding to shut that down. That doesn't look too good. That doesn't look good That looks copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. I would hope that this is a simulation. Yeah, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? It looks like so because the, the parts I've been in looked really good. Like, uh, so I started out. You're at Tony's home, and he's just decided to Drink. cease production. <laughs> <laughs> Scotch uh, cease production of the weapons side of Stark Industries. He's just doing that, shutting down at all, and he's just going to make but himself Iron a Man. weapon. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to make a yeah. giant. He's not going to so give weapons song. to anyone else anymore. He's yeah, just going to be one? the weapon. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Um, but it's kind of not following the films i think it's just taking the ideas of what happens in the stories and the comics and just doing its own thing and so you sort of start out your training is you're destroying the last of the drones kind of ceremoniously to pepper pots uh to signify that you've just destroyed the last of the weapons production for stark Industries, sort of thing and that's how you learn to use your repulses and uh, the weapons and then you go into uh flying around with pepper pots but someone has taken control of the drones and there's someone else using stark industry drones and you don't know who and yeah carnage and mayhem ensues I'm enjoying it. I think it looked good. It is that, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of comic booky, kind of animated. Um, I believe that's it's called bad graphics. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's like the look it, I'm going for. You know what? It's it's smooth though. Like it's not as pixelated and sort of. Um, yeah, what's the what's the word when they say screen doory type? Oh yeah, stuff yeah. that you get on VR where it looks like you're kind of looking through a screen door. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't get that. It was really smooth for, and it was just that yeah. time. I liked it. Oh, look, flying through rings. That always worked out well for superhero games. Oh, that's your... Uh, is that a spoiler? Brayden, we should probably not show this bit. Thank you. That was So this is all tutorial right at the very start on how to use your... And oh, how okay. to use flight controls and stuff. Okay. That's cool. literally the first thing you're doing. Do you get to use Tony Stark's computer? I don't know yet. You know, like, I hope so. Do you, do you make stuff? I hope so. Um, oh, this is one yeah. part where you fly. You you jump out of the, the, uh, the plane there because your suitcase that oh, has your suit. Oh, shit. That's not a simulation. What do you mean? Name on that building. I didn't see that. Oscorp. Oh, hey, sick. Nice. Still might be a simulation because look at it. But yeah, you jump out of the plane to chase down your suitcase that has your suit in it as it's falling. Oh, he does that in the movie. Yeah, and so you, you see that the glove comes up. You've got to move your controller up into the hand and then the glove comes on nice. it and you, you feel yourself doing that and then you get the other one and then your faceplate comes on. The only thing I'm worried about is all the enemies like drones. Are you just fighting drones? So far, all I fought is drones. I got a feeling this entire game. But I've been just into the, shoot I've been into the flying like things. Forty-five minutes, maybe forty yeah. minutes, maybe. Anyway, um, I'm really looking forward to playing more. Though I was really impressed with it. Cool. It's more like a, more of a first look kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll delve cool. more into it. Like the other thing I did is I did buy I did buy Paper Mario today. I've taken it home. I've installed it. I've played probably twenty minutes. How it do you was... change weapons and stuff? Just with the buttons on their thingies. So you use got... origami. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so when you're flying, you're using the triggers, and when you're firing weapons, you're using the thumb buttons. So oh, yeah, different cool, buttons cool. will do different things sense. in the hands. I reckon I'll just get sick because I, 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 I think you probably would. Yeah, I get sick from just normal things in VR, let alone flying through the air. Nah, I. It looks great though. It looks, half of that looked great, and that's what we've been playing and reviewed for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been Hack the Dino. Uh, we come to you each and every week over on youtube.com backslash hack the dino. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all the things, especially this video. If you could like do, do the, the thumb up thing, we'd really like to thumb you up, baby. Whoa. Uh, you can also put your thumb up there. You can also head on over to bit.ly backslash hack the dino to join our super friendly and super awesome Discord. Bunch of Great people in there. Uh, we really, really appreciate all the uh, conversations. If you like talking it. games, go over there. There's such a good community over there. Uh, we are also over on the old Twitch where Dan sometimes streams games. Uh, he's getting back to that soon. There's just other things that need to take priority at the moment, which is why we're coming to you weekly. But head on over to twitch.tv backslash hack the dino. And finally, if you're a podcast type of person, you can catch us over on Spotify, on iTunes, and on SoundCloud and all podcast devices now dan you've got some patreons you'd like to thank yeah so we have a patreon and every uh week we thank the producer level patreons these are the people that uh support us at the highest rank that we've got is this the highest rank yeah thousand no, dollars rank we've got um and you get mentioned every show so thank these you. are the best rankers we have these are our these are, these are the bunch of rankers all of them just 
rankers. The number these one the, rankers. These are these are our, our totes friends. Um, <laughs> That's their so, official title. I'm changing the pledge. Um, so totes Sam Beard, friends. thank you to Sam Beard. Thanks, thank Sam. you to Ashraf. Thank you to Floppy. Thank you to Todd Hello. Randall. Thank you to Tommaso. Thank you to Mike Towns. Thank you to Karen Knight. Thank you to Ash Knight. Thank you to Dylan Stevens. And thank you to Carl and Bud. Um, Oh, Triple Indy. We can't do this without you. We love you. You uh, without your uh, without your your money <laughs> <laughs> and your support. Generous without support. your generous support, we can't. We, you know, you keep the mics on. You keep the lights on. You you let us do this. You let us create this for you guys, and I love that so much. And I can't thank you enough. Like, I can thank you enough. Thanks. That's it. What more do you want? Huh? Oh, you Probably little don't turkey man. <laughs> Anyway, Floppy, you got something to plug? Yeah, look, if you uh, like looking at stuff that I buy <laughs> and stuff that I pay for monies for and sometimes get gifted or Is... play, uh, jump over on Instagram, do Floppy Plays Games. I've been a little inactive over the last couple of weeks, but I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to throw up there over over the weekend, I think. Basically, if you want to see what the life of a game anthropologist entails. Mm. Yeah, where right I, all my money goes. Do you want to plug some things? Yo, I want to plug some things. Uh, I'll quickly plug my um, other podcast that I actually work on. Um, it is a movie podcast Ooh. called Millennial Movie Talk. Um, we go over, we talk about movie news. We just had a uh, guest from, um, it, some people know pretty much it, and more than enough over on YouTube. They do a lot of uh, movie-related stuff. Um, they, uh, just, uh, Jake came and guested on our show. Who's, and, um, who's Jake? Uh, he's American. He's over in America. Oh, Yeah. So uh, we got a bit of an insight into what it's like being in America right now. Um, and we also talked about a bunch of movie stuff. If you like movies. Bring up my picture as well, bro. I'm about to. Of my there. podcast, which I'm just about to plug, which is, um, <laughs> I do a horror movie podcast, um, over on SoundCloud and YouTube. It is called, uh, Terrorvision Horror Podcast. I do that. I co-host that with uh, Jennifer Strand, and it's basically if you love horror, which I do, we talk about horror films that we've watched. We do reviews. We talk about horror news. It's basically this, but horror films. Um, but it's only audio. Uh, so go over there, check it out. Give us a thumb. Give us a comment. Give us a star. All those things help. If it, uh, or just go over there and listen to it. If you like horror movies and you love looking at my little face, actually you can't see it ever because it's audio. You can hear his face, though. Uh, uh, (laughs) Cancel Dan, ladies and gentlemen. And you can see my other podcast with your ears. Uh, It's called Retro Trigger, where we look at all things retro. We've talked about Super Nintendo with Floppy. We've talked about Transformers with Sean Fuster, who's the lead court reporter for The Advertiser. Also a big old nerd. And speaking of big old nerds, the latest episode is out now, which features this big old nerd talking about... Dragon Ball Z. That was a real fun episode. Did actually. you like that one? I did. I really enjoyed it. We, um, went, we went deep on some of that we stuff. We did. Uh, we got coming up next month with Dean Rankin, who is the artist for some of the Ooh. old uh, Simpsons comics. We're talking about season five of The Simpsons. And this is, is the- legit. Simpsons comics. This yeah. isn't just like this the Australian the Bongo, Simpsons. No, the Bongo comics. Some dude that yeah. drew Simpsons pictures in the back of his notebook at No, school. He's, he's the actual artist. Uh, he's a very lovely man. Um, we've also got uh, Ben from the Toy Power podcast talking about He-Man coming up. And I He-Man. just recorded an episode <laughs> with Mr. A-Game talking oh, about Nintendo 64. So that was a lot of fun as well. That's coming up. So Retro Trigger, just search for it everywhere. Uh, we're there. It's we're, our most popular podcast. That's right. Game Boy Dad says more floppy. All right, I'll give you one. This is my latest pickup. Ooh. Look at that. Done. Super well done. Game Boy. Thank you, everyone. Be sure to do the thumbs up, all the things. We'll see you next week. Be good to people you like. Screw the bad guys. <laughs>